around me much. Okay. <laughs> oh man. What's up everyone? So here it is. The grand finale we've all been waiting for. <laughs> the 2001 Ford Crown Victoria. Now this isn't the police interceptor, this is the actual Crown Victoria. It's never been converted, you know. Um, but yeah, 2001. It's got about 86,000 miles on it. 85, 86,000 miles. Um, super clean interior. Pretty good on the outside. Uh, it has the typical Crown Victoria issues where like faded hood, excuse me, faded roof, faded bumper, that kind of stuff. But uh, let me show you the interior. Nice looking car. Got this one in New Mexico very recently, about two weeks ago. From a nice gentleman who is a really big car guy, actually. It's got great seats, great headliner. All the buttons and switches work. Cold AC, hot heater. But uh, the real reason I bought this wasn't just that it's a clean low mileage car. I mean, that does help. Um, so I'm always scouring Facebook. I was looking for the next Facebook thing, you know, because I like to buy, buy cars, sell cars, fix them and all that. Uh, I was searching for a Jeep Cherokee and this popped up and it said it had been posted two months ago. And I'm thinking, two months ago? How did I never see this thing? Because uh, it's got a couple of surprises. Let me give you a quick indicator. Oh, it's got gauges. Cool. Yeah, whatever. What's that one? Does that say boost? Oh my lord, it does. <laughs> So this car, I haven't cleaned the engine bay yet, so bear with me, but that's next on the to-do list. But this little mama jama. It's got an Allen supercharger on the top, top mounted. And then if those of you car guys that are closely uh, examining, look at that. What is that? What could that be? I <laughs> really gotta clean the engine bay. But uh, yeah, it's a supercharged nitrous Crown Vic. And uh, I haven't plugged in the nitrous bottle. I need to go buy one to set it up. I know it does work. I've uh, messed with the settings and the buttons. The nitrous system is plumbed and the car is tuned for it. Because if I turn the switch on and gun it, the guy told me it, it hits the nitrous at full throttle. Um, you'll, you actually hear the uh, engine bog at high RPM. And I think it's bogging because it's uh, dumping in a lot of extra fuel in anticipation for the nitrous that's not there. So it, I was like, yeah, it, <laughs> it should be ready to go with nitrous, which is nuts. Um, the only concern is that I have no idea the guy I bought it from didn't do the work. The previous guy before him did the work. The guy I bought it from, he's had the car for, uh, I think he said four to six years, kind of ballpark. Um, I asked him, is there any internals done? And he said he didn't know. He had, he's like, you know what? I, I've never opened it. I have no idea. Uh, he's never hit it on nitrous. So, uh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> There's no question I'm going to do it. But the thing is, uh, can the car hold? You know, I'd, uh, I was thinking about, I'd hate to pop the motor, but at the same time, like there's probably a million of these motors. So I can find a low mileage motor. And then, you know, if it pops, likely the supercharger survives. Likely a lot of the stuff survives. I mean, not that I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm just kind of, uh, preparing for the worst case scenario because I'm, I'm going to plug in that bottle. It's hilarious. You know, as it is, I'll show you a couple of clips. This thing, uh, it peels out, it burns out. Um, it's got everything, everything's the way it needs to be. I would say it's biggest thing holding it back at the moment is, uh, maybe the tires. The tires aren't exactly new. They got good tread on them, but they're, uh, from 2017. So they're a little bit like hard, hard rubber, not quite plastic, but hard rubber. And, uh, but that makes it a little more fun, which is cool. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I paid 4,200 bucks for the car. So <laughs> 4,200 bucks less than, uh, that's less than 5k. I mean, it sounds great. Like engine light on, but that's cause it doesn't have any cats. So, uh, seatbelt, great mileage. Uh, it had 84,000 when I bought it. Everything works. Now this says, uh, this says water temp, but it's actually oil temp and then boost gauge. <laughs> well, so he, he was asking for a, a little more of course because you always got to do some negotiation but i went to meet the guy we had a discussion a really nice guy really cool dude um and yeah that's what we decided on and i was i was really really like i mentioned real happy about it because for four grand nowadays in 2024 especially the last two or three years when everything's been going nuts uh four grand barely got you a running car i mean some of these guys are looking at 300 000 mile cars 
and they want three and a half, four K. And it's absolutely insane, but I think it's finally starting to calm down as far as the market as a whole. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so I do plan on keeping this car. I do plan on enjoying it, uh, putting some miles on it for sure. Um, hitting the nitrous button. <laughs> it's gonna happen. There's no way I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> and then uh, probably around income tax season, which is in a couple of months, I'll uh, go ahead and swap it out and put it for sale and pick something else up. Cause that's just, you know, I don't flip cars. <laughs> Government. <laughs> I don't flip cars, but I do like to buy cars. I like to enjoy them, do what I'm doing now, and then uh, put them for sale and find the next one, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's that's what this is. Uh, let me show you what this thing can do. Let me show you a little bit of, little little bit of the spice. stock 01 Crown Vic. She's got some moves. going 35 being a good Samaritan he wants me to go 90 Fuck him. but yeah what's funny is that like if I'm ripping up the streets cruising having fun and a cop comes around the corner and there's you know not just my car but a bunch of cars and I'm sitting there cruising you're not gonna look twice at it you're gonna look at the Mustang you're gonna say okay that was way too loud that was way too I might have heard something whining so that can't be a freaking crown Vic right I'm gonna dust this truck what an ass I just didn't get the right lane change my mind we look around yes you did. <laughs> Y'all can see it. <laughs> come on, come on. I know you want it. No, he doesn't want it. <laughs> That's the other fun thing is uh, <laughs> nobody expects it. Um, like I mentioned, I've had a Subaru WRX, and I drive that thing all the time. And uh, if you're driving for 10, 15 minutes, you can find somebody who wants to race. There's gonna be another Mustang, Camaro, something, even trucks that want to race. But it's funny because uh, I was driving this around my block. I came to a stop, I was about to come to the stop sign, and in my rearview mirror was a Hellcat coming in hot, super hot, you know, going 90. And I was like, oh damn. I, I come to the stop, this traffic, so I'm waiting, and he comes to a stop, comes screeching, barely makes the white line, and then, you know, we're waiting for our turn to go. So I know he's gonna go. Why? Because he's everyone is always gonna when they're driving like that, they're gonna take off from a stop sign, especially if he's enjoying his Hellcat, you know? Uh, the light turns or light turns green. <laughs> it's our turn to go. We he takes off, I take off, he hears everything coming out of this car, which isn't even that fast. This car probably makes like back of 400 for sure. 350 would be like very generous, very generous, I think. Um, but it sounds hilarious, it sounds you can tell it's a V8. <laughs> you can hear things going on under the hood and uh, he got off the gas and I was like what and uh, so you know I got off the gas we only hit like 45 um, and I wait for him to catch up and as the guy like catches up he I don't exist anymore he doesn't even look at me doesn't even make eye contact <laughs> I'm on his right side and just starts being a law-abiding citizen and I'm like oh come on like I want to give me some of the race he'll probably beat me but uh, it's happened with that it's happened with the Challenger and a Charger and uh, I don't know that might be one of the downsides to sleeper cars. <laughs> um, you know, downsides, right? But when I'm in the, like I mentioned, the little Subaru I have, uh, if I pull up to any other sports car and give it a little rev and look over at them, we're gonna race, you know? But in this thing, people just don't want to. It's really interesting. Um, but yeah, she's fantastic. I have no complaints. Uh, it's got some gauge clusters here. I'm not sure if you can see them from, your, from where you're at. Well, they installed a RPM gauge. Thankfully, that's actually a big help. Uh, this says water, but it's actually oil temp. And then, uh, <laughs> I almost said the word. Then stock air pressure. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, there's a truck. 
Anyways, uh, so yeah, it's been pretty chilling. It's been pretty fun. It's a gas guzzler. I mean, even in, if you go out and buy your own, it's gonna be a gas guzzler. I mean, the amount of fuel we spent on municipalities for their police cars must be horrendous because with a full tank, and it's a huge tank, it's it's a truck size tank. It's like 20 gallons. Um, the way I drive it, I'll get like one to 200 miles tops, you know, tops. Um, it's got a, it's got three quarters of a tank right now. We'll see tomorrow. It's gonna have a half tank, you know. Mileage, eighty five two ninety. Um, but yeah, it's great. I mean, AC is ice cold. Seats are super comfortable. This truck's also on my ass. What's with truck drivers? Texas and truck drivers, man. I'm telling you. Um, AC is ice cold. Heater works. I did some maintenance, oil change. Uh, I flushed the uh, coolant because the coolant was pretty grimy. Now the coolant when I bought it. I drove it home, everything was fine. It was starting to overheat, but that was actually because the fans weren't turning on. Um, so that's what made me start inspecting it a little deeper. The coolant was brown. I was like, oh man. Brown coolant, if you don't know, typically indicates a blown head gasket. Um, typically means that, look at these guys, these trucks are zipping and zapping, you know, got somewhere to be. Um, so I thought, oh man, I'm toasted. I got a blown head gasket, which makes sense for a car like this because people beat on them. They, they don't take care of them much. This guy did. But what it actually ended up being when I drained the coolant, uh, the oil was perfectly fine, the level was also fine. Um, it looked like somebody put some of that orange old school coolant and then mixed in the green old school coolant. And back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, uh, you couldn't mix them. If you mixed them, you'd get some kind of sludge gunk buildup and that's what it looked like, like jelly, gel gelatinous. So anyways, I cleaned all that out. Coolant temps have been great. Turned the fan back on, fixed whatever that little issue was. There's a blown fuse and some cut wire. Um, she's fine at this point. I'll drive it anywhere I need to go, you know? I do need to do some brakes. Not major, but yeah, I get ready. Oh, actually, that's his brakes. Um, the brakes will squeal from time to time. That's the other thing. The brakes on this car are stock and they are not fantastic. <laughs> I was testing them out. Uh, once again, my Subaru. Uh, the Subaru has really, really good brakes. I mean, you can just touch on the pedal and it stops, but like the car's 2,900 pounds, maybe 3,000 pounds with me in it a lot more, but you get the point. <laughs> the brakes are fantastic. And this thing, it's 4,000 plus, and the brakes are probably the same size, if not smaller than the Subarus. And yeah, you can stand on them and uh, it'll come to a stop. What's funny is that it doesn't have ABS. You can lock them up. I was testing it out and yeah, you can lock the wheels up. So. It's an old car. There's no ABS, no traction control, none of that fun, fun fancy finagle stuff, you know? Um, it's got headlights, brake lights, and turn signals. I mean, that's what you get with these in a V8. <laughs> but yeah, she's been solid. She's been great. Uh, I do plan on keeping this one probably until like maybe the New Year tax time around there. I'll put it up for sale, find the next thing. Uh, you know, it's always nice to enjoy a car, use it, don't abuse it too much. And then uh, put it up for sale and find the next one, you know? So that's 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 what we do. No one around me much, okay. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this car this car's up there, it's one of the best. <laughs> Bone stock, dude, I'm telling you. Cletus is bone stock, mine's bone stock. I mean, these things, if you're looking to buy one, do it, do it. <laughs> mine doesn't rev as high as his. His has a slightly more stock than mine. Um, this probably revs to maybe four and a half, five thousand. 5,000. You heard the limiter kicking on that. What's interesting is that when you shift, there's a two or three second delay, and then you get the, the hard shift in the second. But yeah, when you click it, It'll still climb 100, 200 RPMs, and sometimes you hit that rev limiter. But meh. if it didn't have a limiter, I'd be concerned. But since it does, meh. 